Hey guys, good afternoon. This is just a very quick update just to show you the state of play as it stands now. As you can see, I've got most things wired up. Um, going from right to left, this is my DCC base station. It's a independent company called DigiKeys and they produce it. It's quite inexpensive, it's about £150. Pounds. Um, but as you can see from the buttons across the top, um, it's compatible with all major feedback processes, it's got Railcom in it, it's um, DCC Plus compatible, computer control, Wi-Fi, it's got everything. Um, it's just that it comes in a box like this rather than in a hardened uh, brushed steel case like you might get from uh, Digitrax. But so um, pick that one up. Um, and there's a bit of a teething problem getting it going. You have to set some settings when you're connected via USB and some via Wi-Fi. Um, but if you just play with it, it, it eventually starts working. Um, this is connected through to um, a little chocolate block connector. Um, these blue and orange wires are for my programming track, which will be uh, above here, but I haven't yet, um, I haven't yet wired it in. Um, and the red and black is for the the main bus. Um, one, the reason that I've got these uh, chocolate block connectors is because I want to make this removable. There's no reason why it needs to be attached to a layout forever. Um, although it's inexpensive, I don't want to have to buy more than one. So having this on a piece of Velcro. Um, with a plug connector like a, a ribbon cable would be very handy. Um, I use self-adhesive copper tape so that runs the full length of the layout front to back. Um, I, I keep in mind the rear connection being uh, red, red and orange for rear, right hand side, so that's, that's why we've got um, red at the rear and, and black for left or, or front um, at the front. These are the DCC Concepts Cobalt Point Motors, uh, and I can't speak more highly of them. They're incredibly simple to use. You plug them in, set them, the button on the right-hand side to Accessory, you type an accessory address onto your controller, and then that's the, the address that this learns to, um, to respond on. And you can switch it back to Run, and that's it. It's basically done. You can use uh, these, these bars here to adjust the throw. So if you move the bar up, the throw becomes larger. And if you move it down, it becomes shorter. For me, I need it quite short. The layout, the, 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 the turnouts being actuated are really only moving a couple of millimeters, not even a couple of millimeters, just one and a half mil. So there's no need to have it really high up. I don't know if it will show up well, but you can see, hopefully, there's some extra holes in there. So um, when I first fit these, I thought I had to be extremely careful about where I mounted them. But actually, you've got a decent amount of forward and backward and left and right flexibility here. Um, this works as a fulcrum point, so uh, you could have this wire coming right out of the side here and it would still um, move as you would hope. So um, that, was, that was quite handy. Uh, unfortunately, one of the big disappointments was this wire. Um, I bought this at the same time as I bought the Point Motors, DCC Concepts, um, Cobalt um, mounting wire, I guess. Um, it's red, black and green for the uh, track feed and the frog. Unfortunately, um, it's just too thick. It's really rigid. Like I'm pushing that with quite a lot of force. It's barely deforming, um, which means it's really hard to strip. Uh, it's really hard to bend and contour properly. So I wouldn't recommend that at all. Um, I use lots of thin wire here. Um, I, if I had a larger layout, I'm sure, I'm certain. Or if I used uh, double O, maybe I, I would consider having thicker wire. Um, but there's no need for that at, at this stage. So yeah, this is called, called Captan tape. Um, it's um, electrically insulating, I think, um, and it's uh, just the very thin and very sticky. So I've just used that to keep things down. Um, you can see these are all the feeds uh, from the various bits and pieces. So this green wire here is for the frog. So what that means is the on a, on a point. If you think of the point coming like this, uh, on this side there's a little V and an assembly of rails around the V. Um, if you're going on the left-hand route, it will be one polarity, and if you're going on the right-hand route, it will be the other polarity. Um, sometimes this is taking care of you. Um, if you've got something like a Unifrog switch, like the new Pico bullheads, um, sometimes that that area, the very tip of that V, is insulated, and uh, so there's there's no uh, no problem with that. That, that. that V is not a complete V; it's like two dashes next to each other, um, and that that doesn't cause a problem. For me, it's quite important, you know, at this scale, um, you have to get as much as you can get with regard to pickup and connectivity. So um, these green wires go to the frog, 
and that frog polarity gets switched. So when the turnout is in one direction, the polarity is one way, and when it's the other direction, it's the other way. So that's, uh, that's why we got those, these green wires here. Um, but that's my update. Um, I don't think I'll have a, a locomotive ready for the next video because um, I'm still waiting for a chip for it. Um, but I'm going to show you the other side shortly. So stick around.